When people think about DIY injuries, they tend to think of grisly power tool accidents, circular saw wounds and nail gun misfires. But the majority of DIY injuries don't come from big power tool mistakes. They come from lesser events, often involving hand tools. While I have discussed major power tool safety in other videos, today I wanted to draw attention to these more overlooked injuries. Many of these I've done to myself, and I list them here in hopes that it'll help you understand and avoid them. So please stick around as I discuss the nine most overlooked DIY injuries. That's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. We're gonna go in ascending order here, so I'll start at the bottom of the list with number nine, lumber sliding. Lumber itself is a source of major injuries because most new DIYers don't handle it the right way. I'll do a whole video on lumber handling at some point, but the most important thing I can tell you now is don't let lumber slide through your hands. Every piece of lumber you come across has the potential for causing vicious splinters. And 99% of the time you get these splinters by brushing your body over the product or letting it slide through your hands. Wood has linear grain and near the edge of a board, some of these grain ends may be ruptured and exposed. If you let lumber slide through your hand, you can easily get impaled. I was on a deck crew once and I was passing a four x four down a cutting table to a coworker. He let it slide through his hands and a four inch sliver broke off in his palm. It was more like a shiv than a splinter and pulling it out was messy. Whether you're carrying lumber or having it handed to you, move it with firm handholds. Never slide. Release with one hand, reposition the hand and grab firmly. Move the piece and do it again. Don't slide it down your shoulder either. Hop it down your shoulder. This reduces the depth to which a splinter can get driven in. It also forces you to handle the board more securely, like a rock climber climbing a wall, one hand grip at a time. Number eight hot blade grabbing. Power tools that use bits and blades produce a lot of friction. Friction causes heat and bits are made of metal, so they heat up very fast. After you're finished boring with the drill bit or cutting with the reciprocating blade, avoid grabbing the metal with your bare hands. They can easily get hot enough to singe flesh. I was up on a ladder once cutting rafter tails with the sawzall. I wanted to switch to a finer blade, so I popped out the one in my saw and somehow managed to get it all the way to my mouth and hold it to my lips for a few seconds. It seared the skin off the corner of my lips. That was me just being dumb, but I've burnt my hands and fingers countless times just from being in a rush. If you know a bit is hot, release it onto a soft place without touching it and let it cool for a while. And of course, using gloves can help. Save yourself the burn cream. Number seven, drill bit punching. I mentioned this the other week and it's one of the most common injuries in construction. Be careful with your free hand when you're driving a fastener. Screws are very unstable, especially when you're just starting to drive them in. They wobble and sway until they're lodged in the wood. And even once they're lodged, angled pressure can cause your bit to jump out violently. If your free hand is near the fastener, you'll most likely punch it with the driver bit. And I know that these things don't look sharp, but when you're bearing down with your weight, I promise they're sharp enough to break skin. I've had little star-shaped puncture wounds in the fat of my thumb from this happening, and it's actually pretty painful. Keep both hands in contact with the screw and drill until it's fully set, then keep your free hand clear. Be mindful of where the driver bit wants to go if it slips and loses contact. Number six, hammer follow through. Everyone knows that you can bash a thumb or a finger with hammers, but most people don't realize that you can bash a shin bone or a kneecap just as easily. A lot of what we do in construction requires us to swing hammers below our waist, like when you're knocking old framing loose. And this means we end up swinging back towards our legs and feet very often. If you miss what you're aiming for, even slightly, you can bring the full force of that hammer directly into contact with your lower body. Even a 16 ounce hammer is heavy enough to break a bone. But things can get even worse with a mini sledge, maul, or even a hatchet. Again, be aware of your leg placement while you're working. Don't put your legs or feet in the direct path of the follow through. Sometimes you have to kind of stand like a doofus to avoid this, but it's better than the pain of smashing your own tibia with a hammer. My dad actually has a really funny story about this, but I'll save it for later. Number five, drill wrist twisting. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Most people don't realize how strong a half inch drill really is. On top of that, they drastically overestimate how strong their wrists are. In a bind up situation, this will overpower this. Small drill bits don't hang up often because there isn't much resistance there, but larger drill bits are constantly in danger of hanging up. This includes hole saw bits, speed bores, paddle bits, and even large diameter twist bits. Drills hang up when friction or resistance in the hole suddenly stops the bit from turning. Now the bit is the stationary object and the handle becomes the moving component. 
if you're not braced well enough to handle this, your wrist can get cranked in like the blink of an eye. And if you're already in an awkward position, your wrist can easily get broken. To avoid this, drill carefully with large bits. Maintain fast speeds and step up bit sizes to bore larger holes. Also, use both hands on the drill at all times, possibly even with a side handle attachment. And really, just avoid holding a large half-inch drill like it's a basket handle. It's a powerful tool. Just treat it like that. Number four, scraping carelessly. I won't dwell on this one too much because it's gross, but most people don't realize how dangerous just scraping stuff is. And I really mean scraping anything, including rust, paint, or wood, using either a paint scraper or a five-in-one or any other flat knife tool. When you hold a scraper, your fingers are often pointed in line with the direction you're scraping. And when you scrape things, the chips tend to travel straight up the scraper. And a lot of these chips surface as very sharp objects. If you're driving forward repetitively with a lot of force, you can get these chips lodged in fingertips, knuckles, or even under fingernails. It's horrible. I have direct experience with this, and I promise it's not fun. Consider using a glove when scraping, possibly even a Kevlar glove. And if you don't have one, then scrape in smaller strokes and keep your fingers curled on the tool. It may save you from the most painful chip splinters. Number three, step ladder kick out. I'm gonna devote a whole video to ladder safety at some point. But here I have to mention step ladder kick out because it's one of the most common sources of injury. Step ladder kick out comes from people standing sideways on ladders, a thing I see them doing all the time. They wanna work on a wall, so they bring their step ladder over, open it, and position it sideways or basically parallel to the wall. Then they climb up on the ladder and start drilling or painting or doing whatever they wanna do. This is the worst decision you can make. Ladders rely on their spread legs to create stability, just like a boxer spacing their feet to maintain balance. But this means that all of their support is focused in this plane, front to back. From the side, their leg span is actually much smaller, meaning that their stability is far weaker in this direction. So they're basically a big lever waiting to be pushed over. You may not notice it at the bottom of the ladder much, but as you climb higher and your weight travels higher, the sideways leverage you create increases drastically. So if you're pushing against the wall at one end, your feet are pushing against the ladder at the other end. Eventually, your leverage will overpower the ladder's base stability and it will kick out. Falling like this is awful because your feet get farther away from your center of gravity, but your shoulders and head basically stay in the same place. Your back will arch as your body sinks and you're gonna face plane into the ground. Never work sideways on a step ladder. Turn the ladder perpendicular to the wall and work reaching across the top. Or climb the inside and turn to face the wall, though I wouldn't do this either without a spotter nearby. Or fold the ladder shut and lean it against the wall, but never push against the ladder sideways. It'll go bad very quickly. Number two, sawing too close to your hand. I actually use hand saws on a lot of job sites, mostly to finish cuts, so I advocate for keeping them around. But I do see people doing really dangerous things with them. The most common problem is that they keep their free hand way too close to the blade work. When they're cutting something, they'll pin it down with their free hand and hold really close to the cut to keep the piece stable. But hand saws are actually less stable than power saws. You have to drive them with a lot of arm force and it takes practice and subtlety to do this well. Especially when starting cuts, the blade can easily jump out and skip across the board. If your hand is nearby, you'll push a full stroke across it in a heartbeat. This becomes even more disastrous with smaller, really fine toothed woodworking saws because these things are surgically sharp. Years ago, I was notching a piece of oak flooring with a dovetail saw. I had my bracing hand too far forward and I shot like one stroke across my pinky and it almost took this pinky off. Clamp down the boards that you're cutting or if your table is low enough, brace it with a knee like the old school carpenters, but keep your free hand clear. These things cut wood pretty easily. They'll go straight down to the bone with one swipe. And while we're talking blades, we come to number one and by far the most common DIY injury, utility knife slashing. I've had it confirmed from ER nurses that no tool causes more hospital trips than this one the common utility knife. I always have one in my belt and one in my house, and it may be the most useful all around tool, but it's insanely easy to hurt yourself with one. We use utility knives for scoring wood and cutting caulk lines and opening packages and a million other things, but people get reckless with them. Like a combination of hand saw mistakes and hammer mistakes, things go wrong when we leave some part of our body in the cut path. Sometimes when you're cutting something with a knife, you really have to bear down and the blades are so sharp that they lodge themselves deeply and get stuck. So you keep pulling and pulling and they don't seem to want to go anywhere. But when they finally break free, that force now has nothing holding it back. 
This causes you to swing or draw the knife in a vicious slashing motion. If your hand is in the path, the blade will slash right over it. Or if you're drawing downwards, you can easily swing the blade into your legs. I was roofing once and I was cutting shingle starter courses up on the roof. It was morning, it was dewy out, and the roof was still sort of slick. My foot slipped when I was drawing the knife and I stuck this whole blade into my calf. It's not a very big blade, but it went all the way in like it was cutting through butter. I then had to climb down and ask my client if I could use their bathroom while I was like gushing blood everywhere. And that's super embarrassing. Moral of the story, be careful with utility knives. Limit the amount of force you're using. It's better to cut in multiple short passes than one long heavy one and stand to the side of the blade path. If the blade does swing free, it won't hit any body parts. Also, change your blade often and keep it sharp so you don't have to use much force. Dull blades trigger more injuries because they make us fight harder to cut. Anyways, that's my list of the most overlooked DIY injuries. There are, of course, countless others, but these are the ones that I've seen happen the most times and have the worst results. I hope this video wasn't too gross, but that it does save you from some trouble. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments. And like usual, I'll link some tools that you can use safely while abiding by best practices. Because in the end, tools are our friends, and if you respect them, they can work wonders. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan Danes with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.